everybody. Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV here with a, uh, a model that last year you saw announced as the 26RU and very quickly after only like one production run they went through a wave of changes and updates and have birthed the new 25RU Eagle HT that we're looking at over here. Now when you hear the name Eagle HT I think there's definitely uh, some idea of encouraging half ton towability but with the hitch weight on these I do still think three quarter ton is probably going to be the better way to go that's just my personal assessment. What they've done here is they kind of split the old Eagle HT lineup and what we have now, this new series of HTs, they're lighter, leaner, and meaner, and lower cost than they've been before. Um, the uh, the dry weight on this is only around 82, as I see off the sticker over here. The total GVW about 9,500. So you don't even necessarily need like a big monster three-quarter ton, but like a solid gasser would yank this thing all over the place very, very nicely. Because not everybody necessarily wants to go diesel, but if you want to go traveling, uh, you want like a fun little weekender kind of getaway excursion. It still has a towing hitch on the back. If you want to throw a little enclosed trailer or something back there, there's a bunch of fun little things you can do with this. And coming in, I haven't double checked, but I think right around or maybe just under 30 feet it, it uh, especially when you factor in the first four or five foot of it actually hangs over the bed of your pickup this is a short length towing rv that provides uh, some really nice comfort space when you get there now uh one of the things i like they did is this giant wrap around u dinette in the back of this thing i'm a big fan of those because common u dinettes some of them are way way too small this one for adults can actually fit on which is really nice and it does fold down well for, in the seating position that sounds like sleeping so Sorry, my brain went squirrel, but um, <laughs> the uh, the windows, you have awesome window coverage on this. You're staring straight at the entertainment center, albeit a little high, and telling you some things like that, things that are awesome along with points of consideration. That's what I want to do here through this video to help you understand, uh, maybe help you find your second RV the first time, and do you love it more than your money, basically. And this has certainly become a very popular layout. I think... Um, the, the one who really gets the credit for kind of popularizing this concept would be uh, the Grand Design Reflection 260 RD, but there are some other very good versions of this, like Cougar's 24 RDS is fantastic. Alliance's new Avenue version of this is not terrible itself either, so let's kind of see how Eagle stacks up. One of the things they're still doing here that like a lot of other manufacturers started doing and then they quit is the Whisper Ducted Air System. And if you don't see the square, then you won't hear the air. I think that might be literally the original nerdism. And here at the HT series, they're more price sensitive fifth wheel. They're still doing some nicer features like that. Now, as compared to the last several years where you had uh, multiple different decors uh, available in these, they have straightened it down and just kind of streamlined it up to just what we're looking at today. So hopefully you like the general look of it. Now, I think a lot of people who are familiar with the history of Eagle are going to say, oh, so it's farmhouse. And mostly, yeah, yeah, it is. But they didn't put the distress accents on the cabinetry nearly as aggressively as they did before. And what a lot of people disliked about the farmhouse look is that it often looked dirty, even when it was brand new and clean. And, well, now you're just really not running into that here. Now, this big, giant rear dinette does fold down into a nice, like, almost eight-foot-wide sleeper, which is awesome sauce for sure. Um, I'm not a super fan of the pedestal-style legs right there. Uh, I would personally probably swap those out with something. But because those are mounted in the main floor of the RV, they are a floor-recessed mount. So if you took those pedestals out, you'll still have those floor mounts kind of there. Kind of keep that in mind. The window coverage in this is also, I think, a lot better than people realize. So like, I'm sitting right at the theater seat right now. And from here, off the back of the RV, and then with all these little spot windows off the side and the entry door window, you have some pretty good viewing. Now, with inch and a half laminated walls, they can't really put power outlets in the walls, so you may notice how they put some outlets under those overhead cabinets. This HT series doesn't seem to use those pop-up power towers. I'm told they're surprisingly spendy for what they are. I also uh, really like them. I'm also curious to know what people think of this trend. I'm starting to see a lot of RVs are no longer including that like folding glass top cover uh, for the stove like we've almost come to expect for a number of years. Uh, it kind of looks like the same stove, but if you glance at it, it doesn't have any kind of cover to it. Now, is that actually used as useful prep space? Now, I'm asking you as the audience, as the viewers, uh, anyone who actually owns an RV, 
you know, have you found use for that thing uh, as prep space, or is it just kind of like it, it doesn't matter that that glass top is gone? Now, note right here, too, these revised smaller Eagle HTs, they got the heat vents out of the floor. The bigger Eagles still keep the heat vents in the floor because they uh, it's a more effective heating system. But the small series, they found they were able to keep heated very uh, effectively without uh, any sort of floor vents, and they're completely carpetless. The slide floor matches the main floor overall. I think it is just an absolutely awesome look. And I really like those USB plugs built into the side of that slide box right there. Uh, kind of a, li a little bit easy to miss. Now, this sofa right here is pretty darn slick. So given a, a more detailed look at this thing, all three sections can recline. And you can see that, uh, you know, I could fit on all three of those. And they're all three wall huggers, which is neat. So they not only have uh, kick up incliners, you can kick back in those. So if you are more of like a couple's camper, but maybe you have like a grandkid for the weekend or something like that, it's really nice to be able to have that little one kind of tucked in between you. I never understood how awesome that felt until I had my daughter. And at that young age, we would sit down and, you know, have movie day and we'd watch, I don't know, Moana or whatever, a hundred times. And um, I miss that now. My daughter is all in the YouTube generation. The irony, I'm not even close to being one of her top 10 favorite YouTubers. <laughs> She prefers things like uh, music and video games. And frankly, at her age, I guess I can't blame her. I think watching her dad talk about campers all day, probably not the most exciting thing. Um, they did not put an electric space heat and fireplace in this one. Instead, they went for really maximized storage. Now, technically, the kitchen counter does taper back a little toward the entry door. But for the most part, they left it fairly squared off. And I think they cheated the difference pretty nicely because the overall kitchen storage in here is pretty fantastic. Now, I like to share the uh, the good things with the things that make you go, hmm. This does have a little bit smaller microwave like a lot of travel trailers, and it does have a smaller oven. Some folks, not really awesome, like don't get excited about that. Over here beside the sink, um, would be a perfect spot for a wastebasket. And I just realized that's where the fuse box is, that big black box we're looking at. I have seen this happen before. On Grand Design's version of this floor plan, when we close the slide for road mode, it prevents that box from being accessed. I've yet to close the slide on this. We will do that later in the video. I'm, uh, man, that's right on the edge where, we'll see. We'll see how it works. I don't want to prejudge it or anything like that. Um, I got enough of that in high school. hey -o. Um, <laughs> still a full medicine cabinet, not just a, uh, a mirror glued against the wall or anything like that. And I do like the space on both sides of the sink. They didn't go with the, the faucet off to one side or the other. Um, Keystone will do that sometimes. And as someone who's used these RVs, I know that it's actually okay, but some folks don't really care for that. Well, you don't have to deal with that here. Great room around the toilet in this one though. I was, uh, very, uh, pleased with that. And the upper deck height in these, like I'm a little bit over 6'1", and in this footage right here, I'm wearing shoes, so I'd, I'd be technically a little bit shorter standing in it barefoot. Um, I can just stand in that shower. I'm probably, top of my head's about 6'2", if I had to guess, uh, looking at that footage right there. But, whoa, I just about fell down the stairs and had to catch myself, so pardon that. Um... <laughs> That's the hardest part about looking through a viewfinder and like moonwalking backwards around these RVs. It gets a little dicey at times. <laughs> I do my own stunts. That's a true queen bed. They don't have a king option, but I, uh, I, I've left a big old gap over here beside the mattress to demonstrate for you that if you wanted to get one of those larger um, Olympic queen mattresses, 66 wide by 80 inches long, it could work in here. And I, I'm kind of growing on that concept uh, because it gives you enough space to be able to stretch out, especially like if you're like me and uh, maybe you like to have a, uh, you know, a, a dog in bed. Like me and my wife, we our, our little 14 pound ball of fluff named Carlos is always hanging out with us. Well, it is kind of nice to have that extra space. When we had just a true queen bed at home, then we got a dog. It got real tight real quick. I really like the big, big windows and see the blackout roller shades even up here in the bedroom. God bless it. 
This frustrates me. This RV's at an active dealer display right now, and people who leave their garbage laying around because they're too lazy to go to a wastebasket, you're the ones that leave your garbage in the fire pits of the, the campgrounds, and you're the reason we can't have nice things. You suck. Anyway, sorry. I got a little, you know, I feel a very specific way about that, evidently. Opening this over here. It is not washer dryer prepped. So keep that in mind, it's just a big chunk of storage. I think if I had to guess, and I can't speak uh, for Jayco on this, but if I had to guess, I would estimate they're kind of thinking of this as like a weekender where maybe, you know, you, you don't necessarily need a washer dryer. The irony of that is even here on the Eagle HTs that don't have washer dryer hookups, they are still uh, warranted for full-time RVing. Now this confuses people, and I've got separate videos on this, but full-time RVing and living in an RV full-time, full-time living in an RV are not the same thing. And I know that sounds nuts, but again, I've got a separate video on that if you're kind of curious. Um, you can get these with a second air conditioner, by the way. So if you're in uh, some of my, uh, you know, Texas climate kind of customers, friends, whatnot, um, you'll be uh, happy to learn that right there. Now, sliding backwards right here, we're going to check on that fuse box. I don't have a good feeling about what we're about to see, but I'm not going to just not do it because it may blow up in my face. Stand by. Crap on a spatula. I was right. I was, dang it. So, if the slide's closed, you can't get to the fuse box. Normally, 99% of the time, not going to be an issue. But if your slide fuse pops, you're going to have to manually crank it out a little bit. So kind of plan ahead. Also, unless you feel like yeeting wifey over the slide right there, upper deck access is lost with this design. However, getting to the kitchen and getting to the dining can work. And I'm not saying this is an ideal solution. But remember, you have this giant mega Udinette back here that can fold down into a sleeper in a pinch. Like if, let's say you get started later, you had a flat tire and you don't get to your destination on time, you may be able to use that as a sleeper and keep the slide closed for some stealth mode camping. And once again, you're going to hear this RV, this series referred to as half ton towable, left, right, and center. I just respectfully disagree. I think it's maybe borderline irresponsible because there are a lot of half tons that are just very not capable of handling an RV like this. Not be, like a lot of people will say, well, what are you talking about? My half ton's rated to tow 9,500 or even more than that, maybe over 10,000 pounds. Sure, but with the hitch weights on this RV, that poses a problem in comparison to the payload rating of half tons. Then there's the school of thought. People say, yeah, you just throw airbags on it. Airbags don't actually change your payload rating. They don't. They may force the RV to ride a little bit more level, but you are still potentially overloading your drivetrain, your axles, your bearings, your brakes. Because that's, that's the thing. There's more to towing an RV than just the tow rating of your vehicle versus the dry weight of the RV. It's a dangerous thing. And I know I get on my soapbox a lot about this, but I try to take safety seriously. And I won't claim I get it all right. I, I don't. But I, I do feel pretty strongly about that one, and I think if the tow police watch this video, they're probably going to agree with me. A little outside TV hookup station right there. Ooh, I almost missed that. Black on black. I was afraid. I was about to say you're going to have to leave your baggage door open if you want to be able to watch TV outside, but you don't. They cleverly snuck that little uh, TV cable port right there. Well done, Jayco. I did not see that coming. Um, if it was a bunkhouse, I'd worry more about the fact that the water heater and the, uh, the furnace exhausts are over here on the door side of the RV by your picnic area. But considering it's not a bunkhouse and chances are we will, what we will, we'll be kind and referred to as more responsible adults, whether that does or does not come to pass, uh, are occupying the RV. It'll probably be okay. Still running here on Goodyear Endurance Radials with the CRE 3000 Moride Shock Dampening Suspension Package, which includes bronze uh, bushings and wet bolt fasteners. So some really nice running gear, because again, this is made with the size, the weight for towing and going. Well, if you're gonna be rolling down the road, you want good tires and you want a good suspension package. The good suspension package provides not only a, a better owner experience while you're towing, but if you think about this, every single 
bump and hiccup going down the road that isn't absorbed by the suspension has to get that violence in towing has to get translated into the RV. A good suspension will actually help keep your RV out of the shop. A lot of people don't even think about that, but uh, I will I will die on that hill. Now that little kind of, I don't know, not exactly camp kitchen, but that whole griddle with the sink thing, that is uh, an optional piece of equipment because this RV does not have a camp kitchen. It's not standard here, but you can option it. Now, right above our 3,000 pound towing hitch with four-way wiring harness and safety chain hooks, we have the junk in the trunk storage system. Uh, all the way under that u dinette you have storage. And remember, you have doors on the front uh, benches like uh, to be able to get into the sides, but to get to the back, that works really, really nicely as outside storage. Little bit better peak if you looked uh, down near the bottom of it there at that uh, 3,000 pound towing hitch that I mentioned. Now here on the HT series, no solar is standard. But when you move up from Eagle HT to full Big Bird Eagle, to the, uh, no, no, not 2,000 watts, holy cow. 200 watts of solar and a 30 amp controller becomes standard. This is still prepped for solar. Um, you can still option on the 200 watt package, but on the HT series, it's not standard. Now what's kind of tricky is there's no actual badging on the RV anymore that says Eagle HT. It just says Eagle from the outside. It visibly just looks like all the big Eagles. It's more of a matter of uh, you got to kind of know what you're getting into here. Now, I've, I've never been one that feels like you got to get too uppity uh, about like, you know, labeling the outside of the RV. But for a casual consumer who is maybe not super familiar with what they're looking at, it is really darn handy at a glance to know which series you're taking a peek at. So that's this one in a very long-winded nutshell. <laughs> I'll leave you some links in the video description, of course, to check for pricing and availability. I have a feeling this is going to be a popular model that you will see in stock at a lot of our stores, unless it proves to be too popular and then we end up sold out of it. Either way, <clears throat> I've been choking on thin air a lot. I think my, my voice is kind of starting to give out. I've been doing a ton of videos lately, but that's what it takes to get you that good content. And if you appreciate the efforts here, hit that subscribe button, like our video, and we'll see you next time. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.